So uh, they need the quarterback, Sean Payton and George Payton, coach and GM of the Broncos. Here they are yesterday on the, the need or not to draft a quarterback. Do we have to draft a quarterback? You'd say, man, it sure looks like we have to draft a quarterback. And yet um, it's, it's got to be the right fit, the right one. And if we had the tip sheets as to who everyone else was taking, it'd be easier to answer that question. Yeah, you what know. you don't want to do, Mike, is force it. And uh, you know, otherwise we'll be in this position next year and the years after. So you, you want to get the right player at 12. Our first pick we got to hit on. Whether it's a quarterback, whether it's a tackle, receiver, you name it, uh, we need to get an impact player. Hey, George Payton was with the Vikings when they used the 12th pick on Christian Ponder, so he knows the pitfalls of overdrafting a quarterback, of reaching for a quarterback to address a need. That was back in 2011. It was Jake Locker at 8, Blaine Gabbard at 10, Christian Ponder at 12. Bust, bust, and bust. At least the Vikings didn't pass on J.J. Watt like the other two did in taking their quarterbacks that year. That was the year of no free agency, then the draft free agency later after the lockout. But Peyton has the scars of taking a quarterback when you shouldn't. So at 12, Miles, this is one of the great mysteries of the draft. You've got six guys that potentially could be taken in the first round. More on that in a second. You've got seven teams in the top 13 that potentially are looking at taking a quarterback. At at 12, I don't know who's going to be left, and I don't think the Broncos know who's going to be left. And I don't know, we're going to play the sound, but I don't know if they're inclined to trade up and give up assets to get a guy or just stay put and see if he falls to them. You know what I think about, Mike, when it comes to Sean Payton and the draft and quarterbacks is Patrick Mahomes. Because we know, and Sean Payton has talked about, You know, the fact that if Kansas City hadn't gone up and traded for Patrick Mahomes, then that's a guy that they would have taken in New Orleans to be the successor to Drew Brees. And so I just wonder if there is a quarterback that Sean Payton likes that much, you know, is he going to be willing to sit back and just say, all right, well, we'll see if he falls. Now, I think that if there's a guy that Sean Payton is convinced can run his system and run it very well, then they'd be inclined to make a draft trade, go up and get that guy because there is no more important position. And especially when you have the dead cap hits that they've got for getting rid of Russell Wilson. I mean, yeah, you kind of want somebody that is young that you can build around and that you're not going to have to pay for the next, you know, three, four years. So I, I, I wonder how much that, Patrick Mahomes and losing out on Patrick Mahomes in New Orleans is is going to weigh on Peyton in this draft. You make a great point, and I've already forgotten about it. We talked about it yesterday. He has to still be agonizing over the fact that he had Mahomes one spot away. Drew Brees wandered into the draft room a couple of picks before (laughs) Mahomes went, and they had to go tell him there's a chance we're going to take a quarterback here, and I think Sean Peyton would still be the coach of the Saints right now if he had got Patrick Mahomes. (laughs) In New Orleans. So that's how close he came. So, and and now the the problem is this time around, the team picking directly in front of the Broncos clearly needs a quarterback in the Minnesota Vikings. So you're already thinking we're going to have to move up to get the guy we want because there's a chance if we wait, he's going to get taken off the board at pick number 11 by the Minnesota Vikings. At a minimum, we got to do a deal with the Jets, our favorite team, Sean Payton's favorite team, the New York Jets. we got to do a deal with them at number 10 to move up to get the quarterback before the Vikings do. Here is both Payton with a Y and no Y Payton on if it's realistic for them to make a trade up from the 12th spot to get a quarterback. The hypothetical relative to the what the compensation is, is it's, it's a lot of times driven by who else is interested so um, is George, and he's, he's talked to all these teams in front of us. And obviously, depending on how much further you, you go up, and then it's also if there's someone else doing the same thing. Um, and so that, I think George said it best uh, at the very beginning, that certainly is a possibility. And, and, uh, and then it's how much you can pallet. 
Yeah, I would just say if it's it's a player you think can change the landscape of your organization moving forward like a quarterback, then you do whatever you take to get him. And uh, if there's a consensus in the building, a love in the building, and you're aggressive and you try to get him. doesn't mean you're going to get him, but you try. And so we're open to everything. We're wide open. Well, that pretty much answers it. Unless they don't love any of the six guys that are regarded as potential first-round picks, they're not. They're, they're going to move. They're going to try to move. Yeah. They're going to be working the phones. There's going to be a guy that they want, and there's going to be a zone where they think they can get him. And if he's on the board after the first two picks, that's when the window opens to do a deal with the mm-hmm. Patriots at three or the Cardinals at four or the Chargers at five if the Chargers would do a deal with a team in their division. And why wouldn't they? I mean, that happens all the time. That's how the Lions got Jamison Williams a couple of years ago. They did a deal with the Vikings. Now, now, the question becomes, and this is a very interesting dynamic as to how many of these quarterbacks really are first-rounders and how much of it is teams that are hoping there's a run on quarterbacks pumping up this idea that there are six first-round quarterbacks so that the players they want will make their way down the board. It's the Jim Harbaugh, J.J. McCarthy concept. And it's the perfect double whammy for Harbaugh. He can praise McCarthy and help his guy from Michigan. And he can try to speak into existence four quarterbacks taken with the first four picks, giving the Chargers the de facto first pick in the draft because they're not taking a quarterback. That's what Harbaugh wants. How many of these guys are really going to be first round picks how many of them are going to be top 10 picks how many are going to naturally be on the board when the vikings pick at 11 when the broncos pick at 12 when the raiders pick at 13 and one of the things i'm picking up from the folks who have reason to know where the floors are nicks might not be taken in round one at all with the caveat of somebody could swing back into 32 the teddy bridgewater lamar jackson Get back in at 32, get the five-year contract, not the four-year contract that a second rounder would get. But Knicks is the most likely, based on what I've heard, to slide out of the round. Penix could. Somebody I trust told me recently, expect him to go in the top half of the round. Now, I don't know that that means Seattle is his floor at 16. Expect him to go in the top half of the round. Penix. Knicks may slide out. And remember, when we tried to figure out who else the NFL did or didn't invite to the draft, Penix and Knicks weren't invited because the NFL doesn't want another Will Levis. They don't want somebody who's going to be in the green room all through round one and into round two. So, you know, before we just assume six quarterbacks are going to go in the first 13 picks because seven teams are looking for quarterbacks— Nick's Penix the most likely to make it past the Vikings, the Raiders, and the Broncos, even if those teams don't trade up. Well, right. There's there's always that dynamic, I feel like, when it's a big quarterback class, you know, and everybody's saying, oh my gosh, you got this guy, there's that guy, there's this guy, there's that guy. Well, some of those guys are going to slide because the team's evaluation is not necessarily the same as the media evaluation, right? And, you know, teams have different priorities. Teams see a guy that they want and that guy goes off the board. So they have to shift what it is that they're going to do. And they have contingency plans and they say, okay, well, if this quarterback's gone, then we feel like this other player is going to give us a better shot at it, right? I mean, we can use the Saints, for example, in the Mahomes draft. They don't get Mahomes, so where do they go? They go to Marshawn Lattimore. Right. And he ends up being a really good player for him for a number of years. So that's where you can get this sort of sense of, oh, a guy is falling. Well, I mean, is he really falling or was our perception of what this was supposed to be just incorrect? And were teams that wanted a run on quarterbacks fueling that conversation by affirmatively throwing jet fuel on the fire because they want to have all the quarterbacks gone because they're not going to take one of them anyway. They'd rather have the edge rusher, the offensive tackle, the corner, whoever slip and slide in their direction. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.